Aloha, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. My name is Master Paul. Welcome to today's live stream event. Today is August 9, 2016. <clears throat> Today is going to be a very powerful day. We will be talking about soul over matter and including Dr. and Master Shah and Adam Markell's book. And we're going to be working with actual application of the wisdom and guidance that they share in this book. So I'm looking forward to serving all of you with that. I spent some time earlier today looking at it, reading up on some things, highlighting some notes. I wanted to make sure that I had an opportunity to speak from a place of knowledge and as well as connect to the deeper wisdoms. And then when I offered the practices, I wanted to make sure that we are all uh, in alignment. And so I wanted to welcome now uh, Esther, great to see you. Gabrielle, great to see you. Facebook is out there gathering more souls as we speak. <clears throat> so today I am at Master Shaw's Tao Healing Center here in Honolulu. And um, I've been here since about 8 o'clock this morning taking care of a variety of things. So I'm excited to have you all here. It's going to be very powerful. It always is when we are here at the center. Uh, welcome, Gabrielle. Welcome, Johnny. Uh, great to see you, Rian. Great to see you, Karen. And uh, thank you for acknowledging me, Rian. So um, how many of you had a chance to connect with Master Shah over this weekend for his financial workshop? Give me a thumbs up. Give me a, a yes, I did. <clears throat> because there were some tremendous values that were offered this weekend. Master Shah, of course, was in his prime. He doesn't know how to speak first and second grade, even though that's what a lot of the students there were. Um, he, he, he gave them the full college education, and um, I'm sure there will be a lot of value for the ones that, that could handle it. So um, welcome, Pat. Great to see you as well. And so... As I indicated, today we're going to be talking about soul over matter and the application of Dr. and Master Shah's information <clears throat> that him and Adam put in their books. We're going to actually do some practices together. One of the things that Master Shah talked about is that when you do things in a group, the power is a minimum of four times more powerful. So you could chant at home, love, peace, and harmony to serve humanity, and you will absolutely get flowers. But if you contact friends, if you join a group like our Tuesday Night Love, Peace, Harmony Chanting for Humanity group, then you're getting tremendous amount more flowers, especially, for example, if you're chanting with us here. Now, I see that the Facebook is, um, appears to be sputtering. I'm going to check myself out uh, on my laptop and see how bad it may be. I may have to restart. I hope not, but might have to. Um, so welcome, Stephanie, welcome, Sandra, and welcome, Crystal. So I hope it's not too bad. Uh, it looks like I'm... Check, check, one, two, three. <laughs> uh, it looks like I'm... Okay, well... We're doing the best we can. So if, I would tell you this, if the signal stops and it cuts off for even a minute, then um, it'll probably stop entirely. I will start again. Most of you know, some of you do not. Um, just refresh your page. You'll see me come up live again, okay? All right, thanks for that response, Karen. <clears throat> so let us first connect heart to heart, soul to soul, placing our hands in soul light, soul service, hand position. This is our left hand over our message center and our right hand pointed towards heaven. Close your eyes, connect, bring your thoughts, your words, your breath, your mind into your lower abdomen. Dear Divine, dear Tao, dear Source, all layers of all committees, dear Master Shah, Master Shah's original soul, dear Jesus, dear Mother Mary, dear Buddha, Dear all beings of light, dear our heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints, to the soul of Master Shah's Tao Healing Center and the countless holy beings that are present at this center. We love you, we honor you, respect you, and as appropriate, we bow down to you. 
We ask that you please join with us here today in this live stream event. To all those that are watching now, all those that will watch in the future, to bless us, to guide us, please borrow my mouth, allow me to speak your wisdom, your guidance, your insights. Please offer whatever blessings are most appropriate to assist us in clearing our financial blockages so that we can receive the greatest value from this practice here today. <clears throat> Dear the Source Soul Song of Love, Peace, and Harmony, that have been downloaded to all souls in all universes, please turn on and we invite all souls to join us now as we chant Love, Peace, and Harmony. Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, Li, Lula. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. <clears throat> Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <clears throat> Again. <clears throat> Lula, Lula, Li. Lula, Lula, La, Li. Lula, Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, Li, Lula. Lula, Li, Lula. Oh, I was in her ling. Oh, I trod red ling. Oh, me wrong her mushes young. Song I ping on her sea. Song I ping on her sea. Send your love. I love my heart and soul. I love all humanity. Join hearts and souls together. Love, peace, and harmony. Love, peace, and harmony. <coughs> How, 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 thank you, thank you, thank you. So I'm going to ask everyone to please uh, go to the video below you, hit that share button, and if you can, if you know how to, say something about how this is live, and it's a great opportunity to learn more about releasing financial blockages. And then maybe we'll have even more people joining us. So I want to welcome uh, Pat, welcome Yvonne, welcome Nicole. If I missed any of you, if you're watching, I apologize. I didn't see your name pop up yet, so I'm not sure uh, to acknowledge you if I, if, I, if I can't see you. So I apologize. <clears throat> so as I was saying, today um, is an opportunity to clear some blockages. Dr. and Master Shaw offered an incredible workshop this weekend, Soul Over Matter. And during this workshop, the amount of blockages that were cleared the amount of lifetimes it would take just being in the workshop, probably about 200 lifetimes. That's the first thing I'm hearing. It's about 200 lifetimes of our own service, doing good, beneficial, pleasant things to and for others so that we could receive the financial benefits. Now, what does that mean when we have blockages cleared? What that means is that some of the associated karma that we or our ancestors 
have created. So how do we clear those blockages? We know what causes them. We don't necessarily remember everything that causes them, then we know what causes them. But what is really key is recognizing how we can clear it. Now, the number one way that our teacher Master Shah has brought to humanity is through love and forgiveness. And it sounds very vague, it sounds very simple. For those that have been watching this a while, for those that have been practicing with Master Shah a while, they understand. But this video is being made for all those that watch this after this as well. And some of those might be hearing this for the very first time. And so what's important to understand is that when we offer our unconditional service to others, by, for example, chanting for others, we get what's called virtue. That virtue comes into our Heaven's bank account. And Master Shah made it very clear. He said positive virtue, good karma, sits in Heaven's bank account. It turns into physical money on Earth when we have earned the right to receive it. How do we do that? We move from selfishness to selflessness. So when we chant, for example, love, peace, and harmony to serve others, that has a great, uh, a much higher um, propensity to fill up our virtue bank than does, let's say, chanting um, the words divine love. Divine love is certainly of tremendous value, no question about it. But eat, everything has a soul. And that particular divine soul song was given to Master Shah about 15 years ago. And every year or so, he uplifts it. He gives it more power, more frequency, more ability to serve. That's why when people play it in their room, they feel better. They don't know why. That's why they take it to the hospital, play it in the hospital room. The person recovers. Nobody seems to figure out why. It's the frequency. It's the power that has been infused into that soul. So what we chant with is very relevant. For example, we'll be chanting with some of the mantras from Master Shah's new book, Soul Over Matter. These are new mantras that have been brought into the book. They come with the highest frequency in Shen, Qi, and Jing of this current time that we're in. Therefore, they also carry a very high frequency. That means when we chant, we get the value. So one of the secrets of generating more prosperity in our life is to move from selfishness to selflessness. What happens is most of us have such a busy life, we're struggling 8 to 14 hours a day working to generate enough income to pay the bills so we can have a little less stress so that we can go repeat it. And in between we try to have a life like rest, sleep, a little TV, maybe go out exercise. We try to fill in the remainder of our life when we're not working. And so we say in our head, how can we possibly have time to serve others? That is the other and tremendous value of serving with all the tools that we have. Serving others is literally as simple as calling their souls, chanting. When you have the tools that we have, you can serve them. Master Shah has put in these books calligraphies. Most of you know that. He's been doing this for a few years now. The first one is greatest love, da I. The one on the back side of it is greatest forgiveness, da quan shu. Now, what a lot of us are not doing is we're not using these to benefit others. We're using them to benefit ourselves. Nothing wrong with that. Just today I was doing it for myself to serve my business. At the same time, we must dedicate time every day to serve others, selflessness. We don't do it so we can get it onto our virtue bank. If you do it with a pure heart to serve others unconditionally, with no intention to get anything out of it, heaven knows that. They know the purity of your heart. And that is what's going to create the greatest virtue. That is what's going to create the greatest benefit to you. Some of you know that. Some of them are hearing it again and they get a little deeper aha moment. Some of you are hearing it for the first time. So we're going to do a little bit of both today. We're going to chant for ourselves. We're going to chant to serve others. But my suggestion is that you do it and you do it consistently every day. This also, at least for me, has been a difficulty. Um, for me, it's been difficult to maintain a pattern of consistency. Get up, do, do what's called bow downs, which is offering gratitude and, and bowing down to, to God, to Creator, for everything that I have. 
And then soul marketing, talking to all souls, calling them forth, asking them to pay attention to how I can bring service to them. Uh, offering service through this book to others, uh, coming here today and teaching. Everything uh, doesn't always work out in a perfect pattern. So we have to learn to prioritize those things that are most important in our life. It's most difficult when we're struggling. Um, I, I know most of the people on this list, in fact, I know all of you, I've talked to all of you pretty much at least once and personally multiple times. And so I can share that most of us are going through financial difficulties. And one of the things that happens when we're in that kind of mental place is it's hard to, to get out of it. Now, last week I was talking about manifesting and how it's difficult to manifest when we're in the crud, when it's right in front of us, and that's all that we continually see in front of us. We go and we do something like what we're going to do today, one or two or three days, and then we fall off the wagon, right? And then we pick up the book again a week or two down the road and we get back on the wagon for a few days. And in the meantime, the crud that has been in our life that produces um, the, the poor mentality is right in front of us. How do we stop that? The teachings that I gave last week that apply here today are still the same. Manifestation always works. It works when you're focusing on the crud and it works when you're focusing on the good. The key is to focus more on the good. And so we do that by staying in a place of gratitude as much as possible. We do that by recognizing that the efforts that we put forth today, right now, are creating our future. The ability for that future to manifest is completely dependent upon you and your ability to trust that it is coming forth. The reason why that ability to trust that it's coming forth does not stick is because when we move into that next hour, that next day, we see the crud in front of us and that's where our focus is. Instead of the knowingness that everything is already in shift. So when the crud comes in front of us, the trick is to see it and pretty much you don't ignore it, acknowledge it, offer it gratitude. Oh, thank you for reminding me of the opportunity to put my focus on what is coming. No question about it, it's on its way. I will continue to look for all of the positive ways in which abundance will show up. This leads me to the first part of what I wanted to talk about in Master Shah's book. And I highlighted a couple very specific things. Now this first part comes from Adam Markell. And he, talks, uh, uh, he has some pretty, pretty you know, savvy wisdom in the first three or four chapters. Some of it we've heard, some of it's new to us. Um, but all of it is of great value. And I'm sure that's another reason why Master Shah aligned to this uh, wonderful teacher, because he speaks from the heart. And so one of the things he says, there's on page 16 if you have your book, he says, karma in life is about eliminating fear. Most of us haven't heard that. If you follow Master Shah, we have not heard that sentence. Karma in life is about eliminating fear by acknowledging the abundance in the world and finally seeing the divine in everyone and everything around you. Now, we could say, duh. We could say, that makes sense. We could say, yeah, I know that. We could say, I've tried that. There's a lot of possible responses. We want to take a look at what yours was. So how do we eliminate the fear? We eliminate it by recognizing it, first of all being responsible for making a shift. We think that uh, because we focus on something, we want to manifest something, it'll just land in our life. What's important to recognize, guys, is we have two things working against us. We have many things working for us, but we have two things working against us, our karma and our manifestation, which is a collective of our mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs. Our mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs, and that collection is created by our karma. So one begets the other. It's important to recognize both. We do the practices to offset the karma, but we have to be conscientious of the mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs that create our focus. What are we focusing on? The path that we have put in front of us one month from now, two months from now, three months from now, can only come into fruition and manifestation if we maintain that positive 
gratitude-filled focus. Is when we cat is when we, we get knocked off our balance, anger, fear, resentment, um, that child check, that, that child maintenance check didn't come. Um, I'm worried about losing my job. Okay, all of these fears do not serve us. There, it's not, I'm not saying it's easy to overcome them, but the recognition is that it's not serving us. So we must monitor each moment in a place of gratitude. So let's say you're out of a job and you're looking for a job. I know one of the people on this list is in that condition of all the people watching today. So how do you approach that with this kind of a mindset? You look for everything around you to be grateful for. Do you have a house that you're living in? Is your rent still being paid? Has it not been paid this last five, four, five, six months? Do you have food in the refrigerator? Are you starving? What have you done to serve others that are less fortunate? Have you went outside, sat on a corner, sent love, peace, and harmony to those that are on the street selflessly? Have you recognized that in comparison, you have so much to be grateful for. These, these kinds of uh, perspectives are what you want to infuse in your life when you're in a woe is me place. Um, and that will assist you to not let that take hold. The key, whenever you have any kind of negative emotion that tends to circle and loop and hurt you, the key is to not let it grab hold. The key is to see it, offer it gratitude for its service, which it is offering you a service. It's reminding you. That's one of the statements that Adam says in here. It's offering you a service. It's reminding you. So when that reminder comes, ah, thank you so much. Give me an opportunity to find something to be grateful for. Look around your room. Anything. So many things to be grateful for. And it doesn't matter what it is. Gratitude maintains a higher frequency. That allows the manifestation you've been working on back here to continue to come forth. It's the derailing of the manifestation that occurs when we drop away from gratitude. That's what occurs when we give merit, value, and um, attention to those things that aren't serving us. So to continue reading, this is on page 18. Adam is talking about mistakes and the mindsets that people have. I'm gonna teach another five or 10 minutes and then we're gonna do practices. And what he says is that we are taught from the beginning that failure is not good. We come home with a C, parents expect an A, they get mad at us, we feel inferior, etc. Um, the entirety of our growing up is built around competition. And in that competition structure, there is a, a mindset of scarcity. And it is that scarcity that creates fear for us. It is that scarcity that creates us looping in a, in a poor place. Scarcity might is built in. So he says that the issue then is if you'll make a mistake on the road to prosperity, then you worry about what might happen. The greatest danger is when things go wrong. It isn't, uh, excuse me, the greatest danger when things go wrong isn't the thing that's going wrong. This is really key. So if things don't go good, you had an expectation that they were going to go a certain way. It's not that that went a certain way. It's the judgment of ourselves in that situation. The judgment of the situation in that situation. Again, where is our mind around it? What are we giving our attention to? Because it either causes more of it or not. But the cause, the response, the behavior, the resolution, they are the things that matter. The cause, the response, the behavior, and the resolution, that's what matters in the wake of what supposedly negative happened. He indicates our world punishes mistakes. That's why we have these fears. You have programmed lessons that come from mistakes. You have decades of programming telling you to invest your time and energy in just maintaining. We expend our time and energy in just maintaining, in treading water. The cost of this is called mediocrity, a ceaseless, mindless commitment to what is safe. We fear to go out and push ourselves. A lot of people said it was very, um, very um, risky to come and do live on, on face, Facebook. But the ones that said that, their fear was around speaking to the public like this. 
My fear is not speaking to the public on a video, something like this. My fear is going out and, and getting myself into a particular location, going to a massage school and saying, I can serve your students with divine healing hands. That's where my fear is. I can go sit in front of those students. Once I'm there, talk no problem. It's, see, we all have our own place of fear is the point. And so what he's saying is it keeps us in a ceaseless, mindless, uh, safe place. And so he goes on to say it's time to realize that mistakes are the best thing that could happen to us. They are there to serve us, just like we spoke about. What to do when things go wrong? Forgive yourself. Step one. Ah, I forgive myself for judging myself. I forgive myself for blaming myself, for thinking that I had any, you know, anything major here. Uh, this is overcomable. Forgive others and find the reason that is there to serve. Find the nugget of the wisdom. Quickly. This is not something where, you know, most of us, we don't find a nugget till two or three months later, years later. We're talking about now. Capture it all now. Stop in that moment. There's some value here for me. It sucks in this moment. But I know it's not going to serve me to focus on the negative. I might need to call somebody to help me to see something positive about it. But I refuse to let this take two or three months and fester and create more unpleasantness for me. Catch it in the moment. Thomas Edison famous quote, I have not failed, I have just found 10,000 ways that don't work. This is one key thing that he talks about on page 20. He says, to start with, instead of using the word goals, my goal is, use the word intention. Intention is a powerful force in law and it's no less so in life, where a goal is a wish, a hope. An intention is a declaration with an energy behind it. it. An intention is towards an outcome. I intend to accomplish this, and then the steps. And I intend to do this first, and I intend to do this second, and I intend to do this third. He says the problem with goals, and the problem, this is really key, specific to manifestation. Once you have an intention, he says, then you have to walk the correct mental tightrope. You need to set an intention. Then you need to let go of the outcome. Specifically, you need to let go of the way you believe it will look and how it may come to you. Set the intention without the expectation of how it will arrive and what it will look like, when it will arrive, etc. He says the reason this is tricky is because of the meaning, specifically because of the meaning we attach to it. When I get this, I will get a car. My goal is to have this, and once I have that, then I can have that beautiful house, that beautiful wife, that beautiful job, whatever. He says it's the meaning that causes the attachment. If you want to attract it to you, we must release the attachment. We release the attachment by releasing the meaning. Examples. If I get that promotion, if I get that promotion, I will be respected. I will be somebody if I get that promotion. Attachment. Attachment to being acknowledged. If I earn this much, I'll be happy. If I can just make that extra, you know, $3,000, if I can just make that extra $200 a week, then I'll be able to rise above it all. Attachment. I'll be happy. If I have this and that, people will look up to me. Ego. These are examples. So now, we go to the root, and then we do a practice. The root cause for financial lack is one's negative personal karma and the negative ancestral karma for all lifetimes. That's the root cause. And that creates in us a set of conditions that we continue to manifest over and over and over. So let us do our first practice. We're going to receive a blessing from Master Shah's book. It is a transmission. It is a download. 
And then Master Shah had to put a special download in this book, which I will be using to serve us today. So please sit up straight. Back away from the back of the chair. Place your hands on your lower abdomen. Welcome, Cousin Camille. Great to see you. You're just about ready to receive a very special blessing. So please sit up straight. Back away from the back of the chair. Close your eyes. Bring your thoughts, your mind, and your breath into your lower abdomen. Connect to divine. Dear God, I am so honored to receive this special blessing at this time. So Master Shah has transmitted into this book a very special forgiveness treasure. Prepare to receive. And for those that aren't familiar with this, if you don't wish to receive, just simply tell Divine, I'm not ready to receive. Divine order, through the authority Master Shah has given to me to offer transmissions through his books, Tao Rainbow Light Ball and Rainbow Liquid Spring of Tao Forgiveness, Soul, Mind, Body Transplants, to all those that watch this video if they agree to receive. Transmission. Wow, this is such a beautiful treasure. It's huge. Huge, huge, huge treasure. It's, it's, it's extraordinary. Okay. So let's use this time to practice. So in Master Shah's book, and Adam Markell's book, we have the dot I calligraphy. If you have the book, please get it, because we're going to be using it to do some tracing while we are practicing. For those that don't have it, I'll be doing tracing on your behalf, and we'll be all chanting together. <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, start by asking the book to service. Dear the soul of this book, the soul of the Kaigong blessing in this book, the entirety of the Shen Qi Jing of all the blessings transmitted to this book, including the greatest love, Da Ai Calligraphy. I love you, honor you, appreciate you, respect you, and I personally bow down to you. I am honored for your service here today. We ask that all of the blessings, all the holy beings, to please come at this time to assist all of those watching here today, all of those that will watch this video in the future, to receive the blessings to transform their negative mindsets, attitudes, and beliefs around finances and financial abundance, to assist them to open their heart and soul to be more selfless and less selfish, to guide them to become more aware of the tools that are available to them to transform their life. We are extremely, extremely grateful. So at home, uh, I'll keep my eyes open because I'm on video. At home, you guys close your eyes. Remember, if your eyes are open, the power goes out your eyes and goes to wherever you're focusing on. With your eyes closed, you want to bring in the divine's love. You just receive a Tao rainbow light ball. This thing is still, is, is way bigger than you. It's still coming into your heart center. It is gargantuan. And it is helping you to clear these blockages. Master Shah has said again and again and again, he can give you the treasures. If you don't practice, you're not going to see the results. It's the practice that brings the results. So let's do this together. Let's turn it on. Say, repeat after me. Dear my Tao, rainbow light ball and rainbow liquid spring of Tao forgiveness. I love you. I honor you. I appreciate you. Can you please turn on? If you have other forgiveness treasures, please turn them on. Say, dear all my forgiveness treasures, please turn on. Dear Da Quan Chu, greatest forgiveness calligraphy. I changed my mind. We're going to trace the greatest uh, forgiveness since we received that light ball. I love you. Could you please bless me for what has been requested? Thank you, thank you, thank you. Now at this time, I'll give you 30 seconds. You can make a specific request. This again is for ourselves. We're going to do chanting for others in just a minute. We're going to do this for ourselves right now. 
Okay, so make any request that you'd like uh, for finances, prosperity, new job, new boss, <laughs> new job with a new boss, whatever you'd like at this time. <clears throat> okay, now keep your eyes closed. Keep your mind in your heart center or your lower abdomen, whatever is comfortable for you. Visualize a rainbow light ball spinning. And as it's spinning, it's making it brighter and brighter and brighter. And all of the thoughts, anything negative is flying out. Let us chant. Da Quan Shu. Da Quan Shu. For those that do have their book, of course, you would keep your eyes open and trace. Da Quan Shu. Na Quan Chu Na Quan Chu Da Quan Chu Da Quan Chu Da Quan Chu Greatest forgiveness Greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness. <clears throat> Repeat after me. Dear the Shen Shi and Jing of every human being, every business, and all financial transactions that I and my ancestors have created harm to in all lifetimes. I and my ancestors deeply apologize. We sincerely apologize. Please forgive us. We know in our hearts that to ask for forgiveness is not enough, that we have to serve. To serve is to make others happier and healthier. We will offer more humanitarian service. We will chant. We will meditate more. We will serve unconditionally. Thank you so much. Dear everyone and everything that has hurt or harmed my ancestors, our businesses, our finances, and I in all lifetimes, I totally forgive you. I forgive you unconditionally. Dear Source, dear Heaven, and Mother Earth, dear Tao Source Calligraphy, Da Quan Chu, please forgive my ancestors and me, our businesses, and all of our financial mistakes that we have made related to finances and business in any or all of our lifetimes. We are extremely honored and grateful. We know in our heart to ask only for forgiveness is not enough. We will serve. Thank you. Let us continue. Da Quan Chu Da Quan Chu Da Quan Chu Da Quan Chu I'm tracing for all of you. Da Quan Chu Da Quan Chu Da Quan Chu Da Quan Chu And for those that are not familiar, they have a book and they're tracing. You put all five fingers together like this. You touch them together. This connects the five elements, which also helps heal the major organs in the body. Continue to chant. Greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness. Da Quan Shu. Da Quan Shu. Da Quan Shu. Da Quan 
want you. Please forgive me. I forgive you. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. Please forgive me. I forgive you. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. Da Quan Shu Da Quan Shu Da Quan Shu Da Quan Shu Greatest forgiveness Greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness. Da Quan Shu, Da Quan Shu. Da Quan Chu, Da Quan Chu. Please forgive me, I forgive you. Bring love, peace, harmony. Bring love, peace, harmony. And now keep your eyes closed. Repeat after me. Dear all of my downloads treasures, all the blessings in this book, could you please offer forgiveness to all of those souls other than me that are watching this video, that will watch this in the future. Bless them to release their blockages so that they can be more prosperous, so that they can serve better. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Continue. Greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness, Greatest forgiveness. Da Quan Shu. Da Quan Shu. Da Quan Shu. Da Quan Shu. Greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness. Repeat after me. There are all the holy beings that are present. Da Quan Chu Calligraphy, could you please offer your financial blessings, forgiveness to all those that are suffering on the streets of the cities, living on the streets. Please bless them so that they are forgiven, that they might be able to find a home, find a new set of conditions that allow them to return to a healthy and balanced life. Let us continue. Da Quan Shu, Da Quan Shu, Da Quan Shu, Da Quan Shu, Da Quan Shu. Da Quan Shu, 
大宽恕，大宽恕。Greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness, greatest forgiveness. Da Quan Shu, Da Quan Shu. Da Quan Shu. Now everybody continue to chant <coughs> silently, and I will offer a flow as to what is happening while you are offering this service to others. <coughs> This is the Divine, my beloved children. It is so pure to witness your unconditional service. It makes my heart open even wider that you, my children, have heard my calling. From the beginning of time, there has only been love. That is who and what I am. From the beginning of time, there has been separation from this. Your unconditional service has touched more souls than you know. You see, because this soul calling went to many souls at the beginning of this practice, and there are literally billions of souls at this time who are chanting with you offering their unconditional service. And as a result, the many souls who are on the streets have received blessings that will assist them to have food to eat tonight, a warmer place to sleep. Some of them will receive extra donations some people who walk by and have always walked by these ones on the street, these children of mine, will be awoken. They will feel a compassion that they have not felt before. There are others that will get up from their position, walk and receive the help they need and they will actually return to society. The potency and power behind such a simple chanting for such a brief period of time cannot be understood by you with your current awareness. The reason this kind of miracle can happen by just your simple chanting is because of the collective love, the collective mind, the collective heart of all. It is this that will save humanity. It is this that will save all souls and return them to my heart, free of additional karma. I love you all unconditionally. Call upon me always and in always. I am here to serve you, my beloved children. This is the divine. Oh. 
and bow our head nine times to the divine. Thank you, thank you, thank you, divine. Countless bow downs. Thank you for that message. Okay, so we have about uh, eight minutes left. Facebook is really good about cutting me off at exactly on the hour. So I'm learning my lessons to <laughs> finish things a little bit shorter. <laughs> so please offer any sharing that you have. What did you feel when you were doing the chanting? What did you see when you were doing the chanting? <clears throat> did you have any insights? Uh, did you have any aha moments during any of this activity today? The key is um, that it's important to share this and not keep it. That's selfish. You want to share with your friends. You know, there are tools. Master Shah created books. Adam Markel has created books to teach people. The calligraphies can transform your life. Just trace them a half hour each day. How can people know about it if you don't share it? So many of us are worried about the ego response. Oh my God, what will people think? You know what? Who cares? Who cares, right? You're trying to serve them. You're trying to give them something that will help their life. If, if they're not ready for it, that's not, that's not your problem. You still offer them the same love that you would anybody that you, that you think wouldn't have a reaction. You offer it unconditionally. If they're not ready, they're not ready. That doesn't mean that you didn't plant a seed that two years from now when they pick up the book, they don't say, oh, now I get it. That happens all the time. I can't tell you how many times that happens. So it's very important to share regardless of what a person's response or reaction might be. I, I, I'm sure that many people think I fell off the deep end when I, when I follow Master Shah. It doesn't matter. Eventually people will be aware that he's a servant that's here to serve. And there's nothing wrong with that. <clears throat> so let's read some of the responses. Ivana said, I'm so happy that my Heavens Tech team gave me inspiration to copy and paste. Uh, wonderful. Copy-paste is a great, great, great thing. Thank you for Yvonne's Heavens Tech Team. Nicole, felt so much light within my entire body. Thank you, Master Paul, for your divine service. It's my pleasure, and I was truly blessed to offer it. It was funny because as soon as I started tracing the Doc on Chu, huge heat. I'm like, the air conditioner's on, and I'm just sweating. And then I stopped to, to, um, to offer, follow you through a forgiveness practice, and um, and I cooled off a little bit, and I started tracing again. Again, huge heat. So I cannot tell you enough how much power is coming through these calligraphies. Truly, truly extraordinary power has been placed into these. And if you were one of the very blessed ones <clears throat> in the last couple of weeks, Master Shah has put huge blessings into these books. There are already big blessings in there. But if you received one of them in the last couple of weeks prior to the Sunday, um, just extraordinary, the blessings he's put in into these books. So make sure that you use them. So welcome, Petra, and welcome, Bahana. Great to see you. So I don't see any other comments popping up at this time. So give me a moment. So um, I want to let you know that for those that tune in on Thursday, <clears throat> I'm actually going to be teaching at a local Waikiki Community Center. And I'll be working with some of the some of the folks there. Most of them are elderly, um, but they're they're actually quite active. They're doing tai chi and, and yoga and a variety of things. But they're retired, should I say? And uh, so I will be doing my live stream from there. It's going to be a little bit different because I'll be talking to them instead of you. But you're going to get the benefits of the practices that I'll be doing with them and the blessings that I'll be offering as well. So I hope you tune in on that. I might come in a little bit late because it's my first time there or any Thursday. I'll be doing it for at least the next six weeks. <clears throat> and so uh, be patient if I come in a little bit late and then you can join me from there. So... Uh, let me let me uh, offer our deepest gratitude. We thank the divine. We thank the Tao. We thank the source. We thank all layers of all heaven, all heaven's animals, all saints, all Buddhas, all Bodhisattvas, all beings serving the light side. We thank all stars, planets, galaxies, and universes serving the light side. We thank all of our individual heavens, teams, guides, angels, and saints. We thank the countless holy beings at Master Shah's Tao Healing Temple right here in Honolulu and all the blessings in the calligraphy behind me, all of those that served and all the blessings offered through the Soul Over Matter book. We truly are, are deeply grateful for all those souls that came for our forgiveness practice today, 
all those that we have harmed in financial or in business in all lifetimes. We will continue to ask for forgiveness for all the lifetimes we might have harmed you. And we will continue to serve to earn your unconditional forgiveness. We are so honored and grateful for the opportunity to receive your forgiveness. So practice, practice, practice. Pick up the book. Dedicate time every day. Do more service for others, especially for your suffering condition. You're out of a job? Do blessings to get others a job. You're struggling financially? Do blessings to bring others financial blessings. Very simple teaching. Continue to do it. Remember that what you're manifesting in front of you is what your focus is on. So when you leave that practice and life comes beating you over the head, keep your mind in the right place. Just keep your mind in a place of gratitude and don't allow whatever's in front of you to, to, to grab hold. Catch it. Do your best to deal with it. Love it. Acknowledge it. Ask it to release Keep your mind on the positive. Know that more good is coming and keep looking for it no matter what. Eventually, what you brought started in the manifestation back here will be start landing in front of you. It could take weeks, could take a month. It depends on how heavy is the karma. It depends on how much attention have you been given to the negative. So keep clearing the karma with the services and practices that are made available to you. Keep your positive mindset you will come out of whatever blockage area you're in and you will absolutely come out on top. So love you, love you, love you. We'll see you tomorrow, same time, same place. Make sure after this, if you're new, push the, the uh, follow button on the video under this and you'll see whenever I go live. And afterwards, be sure to share. Bye-bye.